Hello, my name is John Spangler. As always, I explain, uh, I titled this YouTube channel Underground, and I come with the title because I was thinking about the underground church in present day China and Iran and other places where uh, churches underground is expanding tremendously and just having the Bible can mean a person's life. Uh, I do this because I do this to motivate people. I'm not an expert in scriptures or anything like that. I just love God's word and I'm learning. And I give this to show where I'm learning as, as I go. And uh, I, I do this to uh, motivate other people to study God's word. I think that's so important. I show how God's blessed me in my life through a lot of things. And uh, sometimes, you know, we make mistakes, but we go on and, and do things in our lives. And so it's a learning experience with God, and no one's perfect. I try to stress that a lot on this channel. Uh, I'm not trying to put myself down. <laughs> I just want to show how God can take someone like a broken person like me and and do a lot in my life and, and take me for this channel because uh, I've been doing this after I survived my cancer. Uh, sorry, I got a lot of pain today. I survived my cancer uh, four years ago, and... Uh, I started making videos just I want to talk about God. I couldn't get out. Uh, health reasons can't, you know, I'm not active in the church anymore. And so uh, maybe 20 survivors. Or, I'm a 20 survivors. I'm sorry. It's It's been a long night. I've been in a lot of pain last night, but I've been working on this all day to do this. Um, I have bad days and good days, and it's very bad right now. Having some health issues and a lot of pain. Uh, but God brings us through this. I, I'm happy. Don't give up. Uh, so... What I'm trying to say is for three, four, you know, almost four years, I had just maybe like 20 subscribers. Then two and a half, three months ago, I gave this to God and I said, God, I want to be active. I want to be obedient for your word. So I want to give this to you. And since I've done this, this channel has expounded uh, tremendously. I never asked for subscribers. I figured God, if I was to have them, God would bring them to me. I know nothing about numbers, so I didn't. It's numbers, you know. Yeah, I would love to have over a thousand subscribers. But if only 50 of them watching videos or if it really is affecting 50 people's lives, then I'd rather have 50. You know what I'm saying? Not, I don't want people to unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, so uh, I give it to God, and it's expounded tremendously. I'm now up to 612. Sometimes I may say something that's just offending, I guess, to somebody, because I'll know so I'll, lose a, I'll lose a subscriber every now and then, maybe two or three, and then I'll get, like, Five back. It's funny how that works. I have memory issues. I have health health issues, and I have speech issues. Today's not a real good day, but I wanted to give this out. I'm so thankful to God for everything He's helped me do in my life, and we're just one day day closer to the rapture. When I say rapture, I mean pre tribulation rapture, and I'll get into my rapture info like I give out every day. But the point is this. We know we're in that season. That season started October 7th, 2023. Started the uh, Psalm 83 war, which by reading scripture, I have no doubt that's what Israel's in right now. Before this war is over, we're going to be going up because it's all going to be about Israel because it's going to, this war leads to the church going up, rapture of the church. There's a purpose for everything with God. Rapture of the church and into God showing the world who he is by dealing with the forces as, as coming against Israel. And after this war, understand that opens up the building of the third temple. We see we're planning on doing a ceremony in March, April this year anyways. they got four or five heifers that they can use. They only need one. And so uh, it's amazing what they can do. But everything's prepared, planned. People, some people don't understand. In April, they were planning on starting the uh, from the main airport, uh, a tram unit over to the Temple Mount area. Everything's being planned, people. There, there's a lot of things that have been going on. This has been planned for over a year. They plan on starting construction this, this April. So a lot's going on. A lot's happening. And we are the light of this world. People don't understand why, you know, people argue, well, we don't need to, why is the church got to be gone? Well, for one, one thing, it's all about the Jews during the seven-year tribulation. You look at Daniel chapter 9, especially 20, verses 24 and 27, explains everything. You want a clear, clear view of the seven-year tribulation? Use Daniel uh, chapter nine, and then use Matthew the full chapter of twenty-four. Because, like I'll say in a minute, uh, verses chapter twenty-four, verses thirty-six through fifty-one has to do with the pre-tribulation rapture. Everything before has to do with the seven-year tribulation and the second coming of Jesus Christ. 
two different events. Previous videos I've given about it. Some people see it, some don't. That's fine. If someone wants, wants to make, say something, I appreciate they send uh, scripture when they say things. And we can look to see where they're at because I'm willing to say if I'm going to make a mistake on something. Not pre-tribulation rapture, <laughs> but on, on certain things. You know, I'll look at it and restudy and read because it's all about being being open and not giving into flesh saying, well, I'm correct on everything. I'm not. I'm still learning. I'm 58 years old. I'm still learning God's word. So we're about to uh, be gone. We're about to go up, and that's our our blessings. And what I wanted to talk about is a lot of people are stressing different things. My last video was talking about dates. Some guys have put out seven January. Obviously, uh, it's eight January, so we're not raptured up. But the same, same men put out in seven December. Then we weren't raptured then. Now they're they're putting out. Well, it was the calendars were off. Now it's seven January. Well, guess what? We're not there. We're not. And the thing is, if they were right, correct with God, there is no take backs or anything like that. So be careful who you listen to. All right. Be careful online because a lot of people pick up the Bible and they, they get to doing things and they're looking for things. God says we do not know the day or the hour. Jesus Christ said that in Matthew. Matthew uh, uh, 24, verse 36. No man knows the day or the hour, nor the angels in the heaven, but the Father only. Period. You know, <laughs> wake up, people. God said that. He's not a liar. So why are people looking for dates? Stop. You know, I was looking at high rapture times myself. I was in that. But look, thinking at well times, like I gave, made a video about the Feast of Trumpets. I looked, there were pointed times. Rapture is a pointed time by God. And pointed times, I looked at time, and I don't mind looking at time frames, but now it's getting to a point where people are this day. Well, now it's going to be... The, and you're misleading people and hurting people, and it's not the way to be. Let's let's get let's look at what it matters and know that we are in the season, and we know we're in the season. It started October seventh. Season's three to four months. We know this. I don't plan on being here in March. You know, I don't know the day or the hour, but I know the season, and the signs are there that we're in the season. And that February is, I take it a month further because it could be an elongated season. Because the Lord will tarry and bring in more of the harvest. We're the harvest time right now. In Matthew 24, Jesus Christ talked about, and you know, talking about the pre-tribulation rapture. At the, he's talking about how two, men, two in a field, one's taken, one's left. Two women grinding at the mill, one taken, one left. There's other times you'll, you'll, you'll see uh, clues to a harvest season. Well, that's what we're in right now in Israel, harvest season. They got the war going on. The reserves... I, I, IDF reserves were called in. So you've had people, even like them guys I talked about from Arkansas, the old Arkansas boys, because uh, my family's a lot from there. They they come in to help out, do the uh, risk their lives, do the crops, because no one else was able to bring in uh, the fall crop, the fall harvest. And that's, uh, if you look, that's November, December, January. It's a fall harvest. And then... Um, it's taking a little bit longer. That's why I say it take to February. And we have certain clues that uh, we're told. Uh, we're told about uh, when the people, uh, about that mid-tribulation, where the Antichrist, uh, Satan comes in, fulfills his body. He goes in, tries to make sit on the throne. All right? Make himself God. Same day that the two witnesses go up, which I'll explain in a minute. Two witnesses go up the same day. It's mid-tribulation. Same thing happens. You know exactly three and a half years after that when Jesus Christ will come on the earth, the second coming. So we know the day of when Christ comes. We just don't know the hour. Whereas uh, the mystery being a pre-tribulation rapture, they don't know. And you, you hear, uh, we know when the seven-year tribulation starts is when Antichrist enforces the uh, covenant. Confirms it. In other words, he's enforcing it. Hey, you got this peace treaty, seven-year peace treaty. Well, this is what we can do, and he steps up and does this, all right? My point is this. It talks about Scripture. Uh, woe to them that uh, when the abomination takes place, abomination, desolation, mid-tribulation, that it's not not done at a time of year where women are, are breastfeeding or if they're, they're uh, pregnant or it's on a Sabbath. And we understand through Scripture, like I explained in previous videos, they make it to Petra. 
uh, where they're, they're safe for three and a half years, you know, and then that, Satan can't get to them, so he goes after everybody else, you know, all the other Jews, because he's, he's wanting to make himself God. The whole reason is Satan thinks he's going to win this. He gets kicked out of heaven permanently. He's like, well, I'm still going to be God of this earth. Well, in order to do that, he's got to kill them Jews. If not, Jesus is coming, and he doesn't do that. He wants to annihilate the Jews, and when those Jews make it to Petra and they're safe, and then at that point he realizes I got some. There's some that are safe, and I can't find them. So at that point, uh, he goes after the rest, and that's just vengeance because he he knows he's lost, and Jesus will be coming, and he has a short time, three and a half years. That's the way I see it and understand through Scripture. Well, it talks about it can't be in the winter time, and you know these people make us. In other words. He's saying it's going to be done in the summer. I'm at spring or summer. So if the seven year tribulation starts in the winter time, you go three years, that's winter time, and you go six six months after that, that puts you spring or summer. And you know it's got to be spring or summer. So we know whatever year the tribulation starts, it's going to be in the winter time. Where are we heading at right now? What time of the year are we in? We're in the fall harvest. We have clues to a harvest time. There's there's three or four different harvests. My memory, it's not very good. I don't know if it's three or four. In Israel, main harvest. Well, we're at the last main harvest of the year. So it's a harvest time. we got clues to that. We know when the Psalm 83 war started. We've got the harvest time. And we know clues that the uh, seven-year tribulation will start sometime in the winter. It's all lining up. You know, so now I thought there might be years of gaps between uh, rapture and, and uh, seven-year tribulation. But there's nothing there that says it's just a day or 20 years. You know, there's a gap. We have to be gone for one main reason, two reasons. It's all about the Jewish people. Read chapter Daniel 9. Uh, uh, Daniel chapter 9 explains it. And also, we have to be gone because we're the salt and the light of the earth. When we're gone, there's no light on this earth. You think it's getting dark now? It's going to be total darkness when we're gone. And the Antichrist comes out of darkness because it says he comes out of chaos, saying, hey, I'll save you. I'll save everybody. And that's where that comes about. So let's get into this real quick. Uh, my rapture info I give out every day because there's, there's people coming to the channel a lot. And I don't know what they know or don't know. Uh, that you know, People talk about, well, there's a pre-tribulation rapture, a mid-tribulation rapture, a post-tribulation rapture. There's arguments about all that. I tell people all of the above. There's just different kinds of raptures. But there is a pre-tribulation rapture. A mid-tribulation rapture, and actually two post-tribulation raptures. And I'm going to give this uh, and through Scripture and give you understanding. The word rapture is not in the Bible. It's English. The Bible, as I always say, is written in New Testament Greek, Old Testament Hebrew, a couple forms in Arabic, uh, a couple verses in Arabic. Um, so that's the reason why people are looking for rapture. It's not in the Bible. It's not there. Well, it is. It's harpazo. And understand the Bible Cannot be understood with the Western mindset because it's not Western. <laughs> you know, that has nothing to do with it. It's Mid-Eastern. It's Eastern mindset. If you study the culture, you, you, God will open things for you in the Bible. Also, if you're not born again Christian, if I could speak right, I apologize for my speech. Only a born again Christian can understand the word of God more. And like, well, that's not. No, it's not because you've got enough there to pull you towards God. All right. Then once you give your life, you know, understand that Jesus Christ died for your past, present, future sins. Because in the flesh, we our flesh, we'll be given the flesh, we war, but we give in sometimes we sin. That he's that perfect sacrifice. Only Jesus could do that. And then uh, we're repentant. We realize we are sinners. I'm a wretched sinner, so I'm repentant of my sin. And I take it to God, and I have faith in God for what he says he did. I am saved. Later I got baptized. And after I was baptized, then dwelling the Holy Spirit, it's, it's, it wasn't necessary to be baptized, but it was symbolic. Because the moment I gave myself to God, I submitted, that's when the dwelling Holy Spirit happened. All right. Even when I got baptized, after I made that statement, yeah, I, already, I already made that commitment beforehand. And then I was baptized. And, you know, and I'm saved. Because of that, I'm covered by the gift of grace. Only God, not us. Only God. We are to do works. I mean, like the Catholic Church says, you know, saved by works. We are not. But we are to do works. And I'll talk about works in, in, when I talk about James in a minute. And that's the sign of us being saved. 
is we're doing works. We're not to be sit on our butts. We're to be workers. That's what we're meant to be. So, harpazo is Greek. Uh, rapio, rapturo is Latin word for harpazo. And then rapture is English, uh, where we get the English word. How we know about harpazo's phrases, caught up, a falling away, departure, translated. That's how we know when it talks about in the Bible those things about being a harpazo. Catching up, uh, taking from one spot to another. That's what rapture is. Move from one spot to another also means ecstasy. It's a joy, joyful thing. Ten biblical raptures in Scripture. Enoch, Genesis 5, 21 through 24. Hebrews 11, 5, talk about Enoch, walked with God, was one day, wasn't there. Elijah, everybody knows about Elijah going up in whirlwind. That's 2 Kings 2, 11. Jesus, ascension, Jesus Christ, after he was born again, came back after and visited like 30 or 40 days on and off of people, he went into ascension. Acts 1, 9 through 11. Philip, Acts 8, 26 through 40. As soon as he baptized the Ethiopian, he came up out of the water, was not raptured to God. He was raptured from one spot to another, translated immediately, and went to preaching. 2 Corinthians 2, 12. Paul, door and open, doorway is open to heaven. He went for a vision. John, Revelation 4, 1 through 2, was raptured up, of course, and then he wrote the book of John. The next rapture on the uh, God's chronological appointed times, body of Christ, the true church. That's the glorious time. Is uh, Matthew 24, verses 36 through 51, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 12. A great time that we're waiting for, that we're about to be, we just know we're just weeks or days from. And then mid tribulation, two witnesses, Revelation 11, 3 through 12. They lay dead three and a half days in the street, they're brought back to life, and then they're raptured up. There's your mid tribulation rapture. Not to do with the body of Christ, it's only two witnesses. Now, two raptures are going to happen at Jesus' second coming. Jesus comes in all of his glory. Who's all of his glory? Us. We're all his glory. It's his pre tribulation saints. It shows his glory. We're his bride. And as for where the dead in Christ during the pre tribulation came up first to meet their, their bodies, I met souls and bodies, and then we are raptured up, alive, taken up. Similar happens in Revelation 4 14 through 16. As we come with Jesus, we're coming down. Those martyred during the seven year tribulation, their, their bodies are taken up out of the grave, meet their souls. Then, as we touch the ground, is the last revelation. That's Revelation, I mean, <laughs> Revelation, the last uh, rapture. And that's Revelation 4 17 through 20. Like Philip, instead of taking up, was taken from one spot to another, all to Armageddon. That's how Jesus Christ brings everybody to Armageddon for judgment. The sheep on the right, the goats on the left, saved on the right, damned on the left. And plus, uh, he sends the angels out to bring the elect. He brings everybody to Armageddon. Everybody around the world goes to Armageddon at that point. Now, I'm, I talk about, uh, I put out some watchmen out there. I don't always agree with them, but I don't, you know. But I put out there why these are people are working for God. There's no doubt in my mind, and they're doing a lot. Uh, watchmen River by Tom Cope. Watchmen on the Wall, 88 by Chad. New News by Ross. Watchman Adam, of course by Adam. <laughs> And Dr. Barry All, uh, I'm going to see him someday and say, hey, you crazy man. Well, I saw him. I didn't know he's a chiropractor. I didn't know much about him. And uh, Watchman Adam, he, he's made a couple mistakes lately, but he's a strong fire on God. He, he's, he's young. He's only been a Christian for three years. He's come off the street, and God's used him for a lot. Uh, yes, he, he, there's some things he did I disagree with because he did a video about Trump that I was totally against. He's fooled by, you know, a lot of people are fooled by Trump. He's not, I could say all sorts of stuff about him. Uh, no politicians out there to save us. That's Patches, my cat. He's been here on and off all day, sleeping with me. Now he's trying to get back in the door by guy I'm locked out. Uh, he was having a bad day. But Dr. Barry All, as a chiropractor, uh, I was like, man. And I started watching him a few months ago, and uh, him and his wife, and they seem like a good godly couple. But the knowledge he has. Crazy way of throwing things out there, but you'll see if you watch one of his videos if you haven't already. But it's really good. And he's got a thing going on where they're, they're doing uh, other watchmen. 
So that's the reason why I'm not mentioning any more. I'm, I'm just go to his channel because they're doing, they're studying, they're doing Luke, and they're having different, like a uh, Tom Cope. I saw he did one with his wife. Uh, they did a video, read a uh, chapter out of Luke. And what they're doing is having all the watchmen uh, that they know on uh, YouTube to uh, read a chapter out of each book. So that gives you an opportunity to meet a variety of watchmen. And uh, some of these people I've listened to, some I haven't. So I'm going through the list myself and getting to know these people. And these are our family. So it's good. And that's why I referred to him and thought, well, I'll stop the list there because he's got a lot of people on there. You know, they're in 20, chapter 20, 21 right now. Well, that's 21 different people on there all uh, watchmen. So there's there's the list right there, and it just, go, it just goes on. Uh, that there's many watchmen out there, and, and that's how we learn. I'm not perfect. I'm a simple man. I'm not much. And so I just open the scripture. I'm not a teacher by far. I don't have the skills. That's not what I do. I break things down. I love to talk to God. I just have God's love in my heart. Like last night, I had a bad day. I'm in a lot of pain. I'm trying to get things done with the uh, VA to get get back in, but it's going to be two and a half weeks before I get in, and it's a process. <laughs> God, I love the military. It's a process. So until then, I'm doing a lot. Um, but I just was overwhelmed this morning with the blessings of God. That's just why I titled this God's Blessings Before Rapture. I don't know if I'm kind of off. On, I'm all over the place with this today. Looking at two different chapters, but uh, these are one long-winded. Uh, I may not do the second one. I'll see how the time goes. I'll save that for another time. Uh, because I wanted to say a couple things, and I've already taken up over 20 minutes. I was doing Bible study with my son this morning, and I, we were talking about his grandfather when he got baptized. Now I know he's saved because it changed a lot, my father. <laughs> and I was like, well, did I tell you that... that, that uh, baptism story about how your grandfather got baptized and he was like don't remember i was like oh man so the day my dad got baptized i was 14 and 13 14 around there and so shock you know they, the minister at the end said john spangle's gonna be baptized and i was like dad <laughs> so we went up me and my buddies we looked one of my buddies i think it was chris white we looked at each other and was like so, and then he asked me, would you like, and then he called me by name, would you like to come up and help assist? I was like, yeah. So I went up. <laughs> they have dressing rooms, so they do the baptism. I went in there and helped the minister. And he would put on, you know, dad would, you know, person have like a robe. They put on different, they bring extra clothes in town. They changed, you know, my mother's up there helping him get ready. And then he was coming out, and then I was going to go up to help uh, the minister and put on his uh, uh, fisherman's waist waders come up to here on it's one of the things when you do something, you forget the last minute. Well, he went to put on the white sweaters. He, ah, oh, and I was like, oh, ah, oh, because as he was putting them on, I remembered it was, it was too late. So he pulls off the white sweaters, and there's a chicken bone between his two toes. It was bleeding blood everywhere, so I had to help him. Luckily, he had some stuff there and got like a Band-Aid and wrapped it up. So he's limping, and I had to tell him the story, and I told him and that he was, he loves me telling the story because, uh, Ron Barnes was his name. He was the minister. He he loved that story. He would tell it to everybody. But so we went out there and he was limping and then of course having trouble getting up downstairs and death. And I'm like, uh, you know, I'm look I'm, I'm ashamed, you know. So he baptized my father and I helped Ron back up the steps. And then later dad went over there to uh find out what happened. So I had to tell him the story. And Ron was laughing, but he's like, I'll take care of you when you get home. So I knew when I got home I was gonna get a belt whooping from my dad, which I deserved it. By, by far means, I did. But what it was, was the week before was homecoming. Once a year, we have homecoming. Well, it goes a little bit longer. Long-winded minister. Here I'm talking, and I'm not a minister, but I'm long-winded here. So, but I think this is an uplifting story. <laughs> so, uh, we were sitting there back at church getting hungry. It was around 11.30, almost 12 o'clock. It's getting late. Us boys are hungry. It was me, uh, Brian Birch, and, and Chris White. We were looking at each other, and I, and I was thinking, I said, Brian, I was like, you know, I keep thinking about that lemon meringue pie downstairs. Because they had a big basement, big building, and that's where all the food was. All right? So we did the picnic stuff out, you know. Anyways, I was like, man. And then I got to thinking of the chocolate pie with the whipped cream on. And we were looking at each other, I was like, yeah. So we snuck out, all right. <laughs> Good Christian thing to do. We snuck out back and went downstairs. I was like, yeah, we're in here with the food. Just grab something real quick. So we went in there. Well, we realized we couldn't eat any of the pie because they see it cut up. 
had a couple cookies, you know. But then I saw old country boy, fried chicken. I'm sorry, that's a delicacy to us, you know, back in the day, fried chicken. So we're getting our food and we're snacking in the kitchen. And we forgot about Don Taylor. He was one of the elders that would walk around and check on us boys because we tend to get in trouble a few times, you know. Oh, man. we're going. So we, we went into the bathroom, right? Well, there's only a toilet and a urinal, men's bathroom, because the other bathroom's on their side of the church. These are small bathrooms by the kitchen. And so, so we're in there. So Chris is out there. You're trying to for, keep him from coming in. Me, me and Brian's in there trying to... Where's the trash can? It was missing out of the bathroom. We were going to put everything in the trash can. What to do? Flush it down the toilet. Well, he's flushing it down the toilet. And I'm like, well, I got chicken legs. How am I going to do this? I got to break them up. And I'm breaking them up. I'm like, he's like, what are you doing? Well, I can't flush them down the urinal. How am I going to get rid of these? And uh, it's like, what do we do? And then I seen the waste waiters hung up there. And I thought, well, I'll throw it in there. Chicken bones and get them later. So I went in there and, of course, Don Taylor... You boys ready to go upstairs? Yes, sir, we are, sir. So we went upstairs, and I totally forgot later to get the chicken bones out of there. So here, the minister, going to baptize my father, has a moldy chicken bone stuck between his two toes when he put his feet in there. And he was, he was looking at me, he's laughing, he loved that story. And the other story he told, he always loved telling, was, uh, we're, we're good boys, don't get me wrong. I, I love God, I love church. You, you grow up, they, but every now and then, we, we sneak off at night. Because there was a big church, or it was a balcony, and during Sunday service, no one was in it. Well, we were supposed to go downstairs. We were teenage years, so you could stay upstairs to go downstairs. Well, it's not like they check on us, right? So one one Sunday, we say, hey, let's just go go talk and stuff. Because it's the only time we got to be with each other. So, because we all lived, I lived in that country, and we all miles from each other, and Sunday was the only time we got to be together, me Chris White and Brian Birch. That's why we always got in trouble. So we went back. Instead of going downstairs, we started sneaking up. Well, there was a balcony area, and he's preaching down there. And then on their side is the nursery, and nobody was in the nursery at night. So we'd crawl, right? Crawl back here and crawl in there and, and watch the time. And and then we get back. We crawl back. And about the time they, they do the bell, and then the people start coming up, we start counting down. We wait, and we come out with them going there and thinking, yeah, we're slick. Well, that happened for three weeks. And then one time Ron's up and we were getting ready. We were up talking to him. We loved talking to him. We loved our pastor. He said, so you guys, uh, you guys are going to go downstairs. Uh, since you're not, you don't stay up here, you're going to go downstairs. There's this time or you're going to sneak off into the, uh, uh, nursery. And we were like, oh, this man knows God. How, <laughs> how did he know? He's like, I'm not mad, but you all need to go downstairs or stay up here. That's no problem. Your choice. <laughs> we'll go downstairs. We'll go downstairs, sir. <laughs> so after that, we went downstairs. Well, it wasn't a time after that, you know. It, it went on. He let us didn't say nothing to us for a few weeks, and it bugged us. Finally, you know, it's like Brian's like, "You say something." I don't want to say nothing to him. Chris like, "You say he's, no, I'm not." You say he pointed at me. You say something to him. All right, I'll man up. <laughs> so, Ron, how do you know? Uh, how do you know? You know, and he's laughing. He just thought it was the greatest thing. Well, what happened was there's there's a light back there, and we didn't even think about it and behind that pew because there's a, a picture up there, stained glass, I mean, a stained glass window picture of Christ at Gethsemane, and he's and then against the rock and praying to God. Well, every time we crawl across there, he'd be giving his sermon to be looking up and see three shadows. He could tell they were bodies, and he noticed he immediately thought of us and noticed us boys. We weren't we weren't there, so that's how he knew. Uh, we were the ones. So, <laughs> but I'm long-winded. Let's get back in. Let's get into Jesus' words. Matthew 6, 1 through 34. We're so blessed by God in our lives. Take heed that we do not your alms before men to be seen. Of them, otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. These are people giving charity and stuff, food, money, whatever, making a point and letting people see them. You know, our religious people are not necessarily godly people. Therefore, when the, thou doest thy alms, do not sound a trumpet for thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. There's a lot of people, especially today in certain churches, they, they you know, holy their now presentation of themselves. But when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love for, to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. Uh, they want to make themselves seem holy to man, but God knows what goes on. 
But when thou clothest, doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. Not to be seen by others. I apologize. Patch is probably ready to come back in here with Dad. So uh, He's having a bad day. Yeah, so I've, I've had prayer on, on my pet cat. So uh, thine, thine, That thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. Uh, in other words, it's nothing of heaven. But then, but thou, when the prayest enter into the closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward openly. Uh, we have our heavenly rewards, and we will see each other's rewards up in heaven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard from their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth that things ye have need of before ye ask him. Uh, a lot of times I have a prayer list. I do prayer throughout the day, on and off. I pray for everybody that listens to these channels. People have given me comments. If you have people that need prayer, it's on the list. People have asked me for prayer, it's always on the list. And so God knows. I don't always have to know what it's about. God knows what it's about. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. He gives an example of prayer to us. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Not only that, you know, trespasses is anything done bad to you. You've got to be forgiving of them. I mentioned the other day in, in, in one of my videos talking about my neighbor, the issues I've had with my neighbor across the street. Uh, the flesh, I want to just, uh, but, but I forget, at honest, I have forgiven him for uh, uh, some things he said and done and things like that because I didn't give him the job to work on his house. Uh, so, moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad continence. They disfigure the faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Uh, fasting is uh, something that uh, I, I, I don't fast. I'd be kind of hard on my diabetes. But... Uh, a lot of people fast, and, and I think it's very important to do things like that because it doesn't mean you don't eat or drink. It's just you do without certain things. You still you got to drink every day. You got to drink, but you cut down on food intake and stuff, and kind of opens you up. Uh, Daniel did that a lot when he was and he was able to prophesy. He was closer to God that way. Lay not up yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust corrupt, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if you, everything's a career and things like that here on this earth, it's temporary. You know, you should be thinking more, more of a God in heaven. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be sing, single, thy whole body shall be full of light. In other words, seeing God, you know, looking at God. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? You know, it's talking about accepting, you know, I believe it's more talking about like accepting the gospel. You know, you're out of the light, you accept the gospel, and you're blessed, and you, you don't accept, you don't see the gospel, the truth of the gospel, you're just dark. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Uh, God and mamma. God, uh, you know, serve God. I submit to God. Everything to me is God. Uh, man is money, worldly possessions, that type of thing. You know, if you're working for worldly possessions, you're not working for God. Remember, it's going to it's going to rest and decay. Therefore, I say to you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat or what you shall drink, and not yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body more than raiment? In other words, don't worry. A lot of people worry about a lot of things. You know, a lot of people are anxious. We're not to worry. 
And that's not easy. I mean, some people have trouble with worrying, and, and we, we all have flesh. We all have weaknesses of flesh, and we, we fight different things. It's just constantly, to overcome things is constantly go to God's word. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow, sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can one keep it out unto his stature? As I said, don't don't worry. God will take care of us. Don't try to. Uh, it's just something that uh, uh, our flesh worries, but we are not. And why take you thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory is not arrayed like one of these. Some of us don't have fancy clothes. It's okay. You know, we don't. Sometimes we, we get too wrapped up into, you know, what we wear and stuff and concerned about, well, what's this person think of me? What's that person think of me? You should be concerned about that person in that aspect. Uh, for salvation, yes, but that, no. You should be concerned about God. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into one, the oven, shall but not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. God will take care of our needs. Uh, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all those things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow shall take thought for things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. And we're to be daily scripture reading, daily prayer, because tomorrow, tomorrow is going to bring pre-tribulation rapture. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week or week after or whatever, but we're that close. We're just one day closer. And I want to end, I'll do this quickly because I know I got long-winded. James 1, 1 through 27. James, a servant of God, and the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that trying of your faith work its patience. So we're tempted in our lives, uh, but it, the temptation, like I said, teaches us patience. But let patience have a perfect work that you may be perfect and in, in, uh, entire wanting nothing. If any of nothing as in uh, the world, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God of it, that give it to all men, literally and unbraided not, and it shall be given him. Uh, look into uh, scriptures for your prayers. But let him ask in faith, nothing wa wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is, is unstable in all his ways. In other words, he can't, he's not strong enough. He's not strong in nature to man. He, he just can't settle on something. Let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he is exalted. In other words, he, he's lifted up. <coughs> but the rich man, but the rich in that he is made low, because as a fly of the grass he shall pass away. <clears throat> like the story of Lazarus and the uh, beggar, they both died, and Lazarus uh, went to uh, like hell, and the beggar went to uh, Abraham's bosom. It was uh, Lazarus didn't care; he didn't help anybody, and the beggar would have helped. Uh, of course, he didn't have, but he had that nature, and that was a difference. Uh, a lot of rich people, when you when you have a lot of possessions, you think of your possessions; you don't want to lose them. And that, it's like the, the rich man well, went to Jesus and said, what would what, what do to uh, be saved, what I need to do? And Jesus said, you know, obey the Ten Commandments, basically. And he said, well, I've done that. And he says, get, real, get rid of your worldly possessions. And the guy walked away, just his heart aching. Why? Because he had so much possessions, he didn't want to get rid of it. There's nothing here. I, want, <laughs> I could let it all go. So it doesn't matter to me. For the sun is no sooner risen with a burning heat, but it worketh the grass out of the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion that perish. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tired, when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived it, bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. That's why God don't tempt man. God's not. 
God's not flesh. We are flesh. You know, the needs of the flesh, the wants of the flesh, there's a difference between the need of the flesh and want of flesh. And the flesh makes you want things, and you don't care if it's good or bad for you, you want it. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and come down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Uh, gifts, gifts of God, not of this world. Of his own will, begat he was with the word of truth. He should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Understanding uh, consequences. Know what you do is you, con you have consequences. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. You know, anger is ungodly. Now, you can have a righteous anger. When Jesus Christ went into the temp temple and he saw they were selling and making profit, he took a whip, knocked over tables, and chased people out. That's a righteous anger. But most anger is from the flesh. It's of this world. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness and grafted word, which is able to save your souls. Watch how we speak and get away from just the filthiness of the world. But ye doers of the world, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. We're to be working for God. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth this way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Because he's, he's too much involved in the world. But those who look at them, the perfect law of liberty, continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious and brighteth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religious and in vain. So, we are to be continuously working for God. Uh, there's many ways of doing that. Uh, I'm trying to uh, be obedient to God by doing this and motivate people. The prayer, I do daily prayer. That's how we do. That's how we work for God's kingdom. Uh, some people are, are able to do things. They're, you work in a job. You're able. To, I've done that for many years. Witness to people at work, but it's it's all for God's kingdom. God takes care of all our needs, and soon we will be with Him, ever warning His wrath to come. And that's the, the total uh, blessings God gives us for the rapture. Is uh, let me fix my old hair there. Let's see. What, I need a haircut so bad. I don't have the money for it. My bank account's in the negative. And, Everything's going wrong. I have a lot of health issues. I can't get health. I, I'm missing some supplies on some stuff. I have a cosmic bag because of my cancer. And then uh, I just everything's going wrong. You know, it's fantastic. That's the way it was. I was up all night. And I want to do this because God blesses us through everything. Trials, temptations. God is there for us. We were talking about cracks in the house, and I found more cracks in the house because they didn't, when they redid the roof, they didn't put Raptors supposed to put 23 raptors back in the roof of my house. They just took put boards and rebuilt everything. <laughs> my, my, my roof was like that. When I talked to the contractor, it said my roof has more waves in the ocean. But <laughs> it was paid ahead. Um, but we laughed because God, God's coming for us soon. And he, I got a mansion waiting on me. My pets, pets are going, and I'm going to have all kinds of pets and people and friends visit and our brothers and sisters in Christ. And, uh, you can see those those books in the background there. That's all notes I've made. Uh, I have to, like this one, I just finished this one up. So I'm, at, I'm starting a new, new book. I used to have so many, but I lost everything through the storm. And my memory, uh, I used to memorize scriptures and I can't anymore. So I so look forward to being with God soon. I look forward to meeting you. And I pray for you and uh, God bless you.